2021 is the 21st birthday of the UN's Women, Peace and Security Agenda. And when you turn 21, you really have come of age. The WPS 21 and 2021 series honored pioneering women peace builders from around the world. Nearly every month throughout the year, I hosted conversations with women peace builders working nationally and their allies, both men and women, working internationally on issues of peace and security. My guests aren't just behind the headlines. They are at the front lines of making change and shaping the future. From Syria to Myanmar, they shared their extraordinary experiences and perspectives of where their personal lives and activism intersected with some of the world's most complex political and security challenges. I describe myself as an accidental activist. The conflict does terrible things. It makes ordinary women fall into extraordinary times and then they become extraordinary women. I was living a very ordinary life. I was enjoying Damascus as it is. And suddenly everything around me changed. Um, the friends were not friends anymore. The streets were full of dust. The sounds were the sounds of bombing. It's very easy to dehumanize other people because they dehumanize us. You do not surrender to situations of injustice or oppression. You have to make trouble, you have to question and challenge. Women peace builders take on the responsibility to protect and run to the problems when others are running away. It's very challenging, especially um, on the ground. Um, I remember when I was mediating with some of the armed uh, groups to evacuate some of the orphans and the cancer patients uh, between the crossfire. We went to the jungles in the height of war. It was really difficult, but we managed to get that. And that particular journey exactly broke at the ceasefire. I mean, when I really look back on our ability to speak, listen to them and build trust, that's my biggest asset. People call me Mama Goko Haram because in part with my age and then the kind of work I do in that part of the country, I start then to go deep into the communities and then find out who are these young men who are who have turned violent and why are they being kind of doing this kind of thing? Because I believe that someone has to do something to stop it. You know, they are being directly attacked by the local gunmen. They are being killed, for example, because they bring, you know, those atrocities to light on what's going on. I have lived as a refugee. I know what it means. And I decided that if I could do something prevent just one more woman from facing what I faced, then I would go for it. We might have left the country physically, but our minds, hearts and souls survive for the liberation of Myanmar. Every single conversation that I have and have had with women peace builders brings it down to the local level um, because these are the people that know what's going on. I believe that to temper war and conflict, we must increasingly empower women. If you have a, a real vision that you want to do good for that country, to bring it out of the misery of war, etc., if you are honest in that, then you bring women to the table. We have more events to come in 2022, so stay tuned and join us. Thank you.